If the unending success of the Jurassic Park franchise has taught us anything, it is that we are all fascinated by dinosaurs. They're big, they're scary, I for one am grateful I don't live in a time when I have to share the Earth with them because, from what we can ascertain, they could cause some serious damage. Take a moment to bless the meteor that wiped them out because living with them would be nowhere near as cozy as the Flintstones might suggest. But since they are thankfully all gone, let's take a few minutes to enjoy how terrifying they were from a nice, safe distance. These are the most dangerous dinosaurs in the world. Number 15. T-Rex The Tyrannosaurus rex is probably the most famous species of dinosaur that ever lived. They lived between 68 and 66 million years ago on an island continent called Laramidia. which has since broken up and became what is now the western side of North America. Based on complete fossils that have been found, they stood up to 40 feet tall and weighed as much as 15 tons. They walked on two legs and had huge heads, so much so that they needed large tails to help balance properly. They had short but powerful arms, with toe-clawed fingers. And even though they weren't necessarily the largest of dinosaurs of their kind, they probably had the most powerful bite by far. They would have been the apex predators in the region at the time and preyed on smaller and less aggressive species. Since they've never been observed in the wild, though, there's also the suggestion that they may have been scavengers and opportunistically fed on the carcasses of other dinosaurs that had already died. Either way, from the approximately 50 T-Rex specimens that have been found so far, one thing's for sure. They were extremely dangerous, and we wouldn't have stood a chance against one if we had been unfortunate to be alive at the same time. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Sinosauropteryx the Sinosauropteryx, which means Chinese reptilian wing, is a species of dinosaur that was first described in 1996 and lived in the region of what is now northeastern China during the Cretaceous period. around 140 million years ago. It's the first species of non-avian dinosaur that is known to have been covered with feathers, although they weren't feathers like we know from birds in modern times, but were instead filament-like structures that gave them a level of temperature regulation. They had strangely small arms and very long tails, and, based on limited specimens that have been found, were 3.5 feet long and weighed around 1.5 pounds. They were carnivores, and since specimens have been found with the remnants of lizards and mammals in their guts, they would certainly have attacked and eaten anything of a similar size. Interestingly, there's also evidence that they ate venomous animals too, so they may have even had a natural immunity to certain toxins. Sinosauropteryx are also thought to have been pack hunters, and large groups would have been able to collectively take down animals much larger than themselves, and as a group, were one of the most dangerous animals to have ever lived. Number 13. Lyoplorodon the Lyoplorodon was a species of aquatic plesiosaur that swam in the world's oceans during the late Jurassic period around 160 million years ago. They were undoubtedly the apex predators of their time and are thought to have grown to up to 21 feet in length. Although there are some indications that individuals could be as much as four times this size, they are believed to have usually weighed around 2.5 tons and were essentially twice the size of a great white shark. Researchers first became aware of the species in 1873, when three teeth were found, and it was based on these that the name was given, which means smooth-sided teeth. Further discoveries have shown them to have a row of razor-sharp teeth, however, each of which were three inches long, and would have meant that these fierce carnivores would have made light work of anything in the ocean. So much so, they wouldn't have thought twice about attacking anything that was bigger. Even though they probably, usually, targeted medium-sized fish and crustaceans. Number 12. Ankylosaurus 
The chances are that you've heard of an ankylosaurus, as they were the dinosaurs that were covered in armor plating and had a huge club on the end of their tails. They lived during the end of the Cretaceous period between 68 and 66 million years ago, and their remains have been found across North America. Surprisingly, for such a well-known species, <laughs> A full fossil has never been found. Because of this, everything we know is based upon partial specimens, but researchers are fairly certain that they grew to around 26 feet long and weighed up to 8 tons. As well as the easily identifiable features, they also had huge horns that pointed back from their heads, and another set of horns that pointed downwards beneath them. Their noses faced sideways, and they had a break over their mouths. To have so much armor, Ankylosaurus must have been very strong and muscly, and would would have been able to wield their tails with brutal effectiveness. Just one strike with this devastating weapon would have been enough to instantly kill most predators, and, if not, severely injure them. Number 11. Sarcosicus the Sarcosicus, which means flesh crocodile, was an early ancestor of today's crocodiles that lived during the early Cretaceous period around 120 million years ago. It was one of the largest crocodilians to ever walk the planet. and could grow to more than 30 feet long, and weigh as much as 3.5 tons. Two species have been found, one that lived in modern-day Brazil, and the other whose remains have been found across Africa. It was only by the year 2000 that enough specimens had been found to fully describe them, and they had some noticeable differences to what we think of with crocodiles. Their top jaws were significantly stronger than their lower jaws, for example, and they would have preyed on aquatic animals, as well as venturing on to land to hunt smaller species of dinosaur. Curiously, their physiology suggests they wouldn't have been able to perform the so-called death roll that crocodiles use to dismember their prey, so would have either had an alternative technique to perform the same task or simply swallowed everything whole. Number 10. Allosaurus the Allosaurus was a carnivorous dinosaur that lived during the late Jurassic period around 150 million years ago. Their remnants have been found in the fossil-rich regions of North America and were first discovered in Colorado in 1869. There are actually six different known species of Allosaurus. all of which had very unusual vertebrae, which is why the name means different lizard. They walked on two legs and were up to 31 feet long in most cases, although some fossil specimens have suggested they could be up to 45 feet long. They most likely weighed several tons and were probably the apex predators of the time, preying on most of the other large dinosaur species. They are known to have hunted Stegosaurus, for example, after an Allosaurus tail vertebrae was found with a puncture wound that's the shape of the spike from a stegosaurus tail. There have also been some examples of two specimens being found very close to each other, which has led researchers to suspect they may have been pack hunters, which would have made them even more deadly. This could instead be a sign that they fought with each other, however. So it's hoped that future discoveries may once and for all solve the question of whether they had a complex social hierarchy or not. Number 9. Trudon the bird-like Trudon formosus was one of the first dinosaur species to be found in North America. When paleontologists dug up a set of fossils in Montana in 1855, for more than 20 years they were thought to be a large species of lizard, from more recently. But as more became known about the deposit where the fossils were found, it became clear that they were a species of dinosaur that were dated to a specific time during the Cretaceous period around 77 million years ago. The name quite ominously means wounding tooth, and this is in reference to their sharp and serrated teeth that would have been used to inflict serious damage on their prey, and were likely powerful enough to tear chunks of flesh while the victim was very much. Their geographical spread meant that, depending on where they were, they had slight differences according to climate. Those in colder regions, for example, were several feet taller than their four or five foot long cousins from more temperate climates, and it's even thought that the amount of feather covering they had would alter based on how warm they needed to be. It's not clear if they were ferocious carnivores or scavengers, or even if they worked together in groups, but you certainly wouldn't have wanted to come across one if it was feeling hungry. Number 8. Coronosaurus 
The Kronosaurus was a type of short-necked pliosaur that swam in the world's oceans during the early Cretaceous period around 140 million years ago. Two different species have so far been discovered, one whose fossils were unearthed in Australia and the other that was found in Colombia. They grew to up to 36 feet long and are believed to be one of the largest pliosaurs ever. The name means Lizard of Kronos, in reference to the leader of the Greek Titans. They had long heads and a large rigid body, their four flippers were how they swam through the water, and they had sharp conical teeth for tearing into flesh. Most specimens had teeth that were up to 3 inches long, but some examples have been found that are a terrifying 12 inches long. They probably weighed anything up to 14 tons, and because they were lizards, would have had to return to the surface every few hours to fill their large lungs with oxygen. At the time this species was alive, there is no other known creature that was anywhere near the same size. Kronosaurus was, therefore, the dominant predator, and would have made light work of anything they came up against. Number 7. Amphicelia's Fragilimus We normally think of the carnivorous dinosaurs as the most dangerous, but spare thought for the herbivores, because with their extreme size and weight, they could certainly put up a good fight. The Amphicelia's Fragilimus is a great example of this. as they were a leaf-eating species that lived around 150 million years ago during the late Jurassic period. Found in what is now known as North America, they were related to the more well-known Diplodocus, and were a similar size at an estimated 82 feet long. They weighed more though, with a theoretical mass of up to 20 tons, which would have required incredibly powerful legs and tail muscles to support. Once fully grown, very few other dinosaurs would have messed with them. Their tail whip alone would have caused huge damage, and they'd likely have been able to throw any predators free of them without much effort. This was fortunate because they wouldn't have been able to move very quickly, at just a few miles per hour. And because of their weight and the way they walked, other animals would have felt faint trembles in the ground for up to a quarter of a mile away. Number 6. Velociraptor Probably one of the most renowned dinosaurs of the time, velociraptors were a pack-hunting species that, when working together, could have felled virtually any large dinosaur. They lived during the later stages of the Cretaceous period, around 73 million years ago, and there are actually two distinct species that we know of, both of which have been found in China and Mongolia. This means they wouldn't have ever come face to face with a T-Rex, for example. <laughs> and they were very different from how they're portrayed in movies. Velociraptors were more like the size of a turkey, and would have been no more than 4 feet tall. Fossil evidence now suggests that they were feathered, and they probably weighed no more than 30 pounds. Despite their size, they were fast and had a powerful bite. They had extremely sharp serrated teeth that were curved to allow them to bite into something and hold on tight. They also had hands with three sharp claws, and it's thought that they would have dug into their prey with their teeth and and slashed away with their claws until their victim lacked the energy to keep on fighting. Number 5. As Dark a Day. During the Cretaceous period between 140 and 70 million years ago, Asdarkidae were a type of pterosaur, and some of them were the largest known flying creatures of all time. The name has its roots in the Persian word of Asdar which was a legendary dragon-like creature, and they were probably the closest nature has ever come to a true menace of the skies. They had very long legs, and necks had large heads and jaws like spears. It's quite possible they could use these to pierce the skin or armor of their prey, and then transport it to their nest where they could take more time to devour it. Due to their size, they probably didn't spend much time in the air and are thought to have lived lives more similarly to the way storks and hornbills do today. In other words, standing on the ground and using their powerful eyesight to scour the surroundings for their next potential meal. Most would have eaten small dinosaurs and recently hatched young, but the larger species of Asdarkidae would have been one of the dominant predators and taken anything but the largest of land animals. The biggest ones had wingspans of up to 66 feet and would have dwarfed most other dinosaurs across modern-day Romania and Germany, where their remains have been found. Number 4. Pelagornis sanders 
Only one specimen of Pelagornis sanders has ever been found, but based on its fossil, it was the second largest bird to have ever lived. With a wingspan of up to 24 feet, it was twice the size of the largest birds that are around today. But there is a lot that researchers are yet to understand about this species. They lived during the Oligocene period around 25 million years ago, and appear to have weighed as much as 80 pounds. Which means it's not entirely clear how they were able to fly why? Because this would make them too heavy to lift into the air under our current understanding of the way flight in nature works. They had what are known as pseudo teeth on their bills, which are particularly effective at piercing and holding onto slippery prey, so most likely lived on a diet made up of entirely fish. Pelagornis sanders would have been an awesome creature to see in flight, and undoubtedly ruled the skies. Quite why they died out, and why no birds of this size are alive today, is not yet clear, but it's hoped future discoveries of the species may help to understand the mystery. Number 3. Pterodactylus Antiquus With a name that means winged finger, the Pterodactylus Antiquus may not immediately strike fear into your mind. And even though they were fairly small pterosaurs, they would have been a force to reckon with in large groups. They lived during the late Jurassic period around 150 million years ago. And their fossils have been found in Germany, elsewhere in Europe, and in Africa. Their 90 sharp teeth, perfect for tearing flesh, show that they were carnivores, and it's believed they preyed mainly on fish and small animals. There's evidence to suggest that in times of need, however, they would group up in flocks and take on much larger dinosaurs. With some remnants of bigger specimens have been found with Pterodactylus antiquus beak marks in their bones. They had a wingspan of between 3 and 4 feet, and claws on their feet that were several inches long. There was a crest on their beaks, made from soft tissue that probably served as a function in mating rituals. And unusually, it's thought that they could be nocturnal or diurnal depending on when the food in the region was most plentiful. Number 2. Pteranodon longiceps The Pteranodon longiceps was, for many decades, the largest known species of pterosaur after being first discovered in 1871 in Kansas. They had a wingspan of a whopping 20 feet and had a backward pointing crest that formed the basis of what we usually think a flying dinosaur looks like. They lived around 85 million years ago when the central US was covered in water. Pteranodon longiceps is thought to have spent the vast majority of their lives flying over the water in search of fish and other potential food, and rarely ever went back to land apart from the breed. When they needed a break or wanted to eat whilst not airborne, they would have landed on the water and floated on the current until it was time to fly again. This maneuver probably wasn't the easiest of things, and simulations suggest they would have had to hop and splash about for a few moments until they were able to generate enough lift. While they didn't have any teeth, they certainly had a mean attitude and would harass larger animals by flying around them and violently flapping their wings. They're the perfect example of how it wasn't just the mouths of the dinosaurs you had to watch out for, because many had other features that were just as dangerous. Number one, Dimorphodon macronix. The Dimorphodon macronix was a species of pterosaur that lived across what is now Europe, and virtually all specimens of this species have been found in the so-called Jurassic Coast of the UK. Their name means two-form tooth, which is in reference to the fact that they had two distinctly different types of teeth in their mouths, ones that were designed to tear flesh and others that were designed to grab tightly onto prey. They were fairly primitive, with only a small cavity for their brains and would have stood about 3-3 feet with a 4.6 foot wingspan. Very little is known about their diet, but based on their physiology, they most likely fed on fish and other aquatic animals, as well as small land animals too. It's also thought that they may have have been pack hunters and would work together to hunt larger prey that could feed them and their young. Despite the way they look, they probably weren't very good at flying because of their large heads and large bodies in proportion to their wings. They wouldn't have been able to glide and probably only flew for short periods of time, or as quick means of escape if danger was close by. Which of these would you be most frightened of coming face to face with? And do you think you could take on any of them? Make sure to let us know in the comments section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.